everybody, this is Truth Center, and today we are going to be discussing something big that is about to happen. And it looks like it is happening quicker than we thought it would. Now you might have heard the commotion about the Revelation 12 sign or what's something about to happen on September 23rd, 2015, 16, and now it's September 23rd, 2017. Okay. So let's dive right into it. First, I would like to read Revelation chapter 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Okay, well, for instance, this passage has stumped a lot of scholars and researchers for a long time. No one really knows exactly what this means, but something weird has happened. On September 23rd, 2015 they were saying that the stars were acting funny you know the star appeared and this is the same star that came when Jesus was born and this is the same star that came when Abraham became the father of Israel between all of these things that I'm mentioning there's a span of about 2,000 years about 2,000 years ago this star came when Jesus was born and it was there for two years. And about 2,000 years before that, Abraham became the father of Israel. And it was there for two years. 2,000 years after Jesus' birth, we are here in the year 2017. And we are being told that in 2015, this star came on September 23rd. Which means that two years later, on September 23rd, 2017, this would make two years of that star being here. And as I just read in Revelation 12, it speaks of a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So if you look at this picture that I have up for you, It'll show the constellation Virgo, and right above it, Leo, okay? What's interesting about Virgo is Virgo is a woman, okay? Now, hang on. This is going to get crazy. On September 23rd, 2017, the moon is going to be under Virgo's feet, and the sun will do the same okay and things get wild now because the constellation Leo is right above Virgo's head but what's interesting about Leo is Leo only has nine stars so of course you could say and upon her head a crown of 12 stars but this only has nine stars so it can't be it. No, because on this exact day, the three planets, Mercury, Mars, and Venus, will line up with Leo, making 12 stars crowned upon Virgo's head. <laughs> okay, this is all happening on September 23rd, 2017. It's not going to happen 20 years from now. It's happening in, what, nine months? Okay. And now we have to talk about Jupiter. Yes, the planet of mystery. Jupiter, on this day, is going to go into Virgo, the constellation. It is going to perform a circle loop and come out in between the legs, just like birth would. 
And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. The sun and the moon are under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, the constellation of Leo having twelve, well, nine stars with twelve, twelve stars in total. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Jupiter will come out on that exact day. And something else that we also need to remember is Virgo means virgin. Just like Mary when Jesus was born, the Virgin Mary. As you can see, Revelation 12 here, it's kind of going parallel with Jesus' birth. You know, the 12 stars, the 12 tribes of Israel, and basically it talks about, and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. It's talking about Jesus. But at the same time, in Revelation 12, this sign will appear in the sky, okay? It will appear in the sky above us. And it will be signaling something great, something big, that is about to happen with Israel. Now many people say it's the rapture, I'm not on board with that. If they can prove it to me, that's great, but I'm not in line with this thing being the rapture. But one thing that I need to point out is on December 23rd, 2016, the United Nations created that resolution basically casting out Israel, basically going against Israel. This was exactly nine months, nine months before September 23rd, 2017, which is exactly nine months apart, which signals the timeline of a pregnancy. Th this, this isn't me saying it, this is it actually happening, okay? This is real. This is going on, okay? And it has been going on. For every 2,000 years, the star appears for two years straight and leaves. And this star has been here since 2015. And on September 23rd, 2017, something big is going to happen. And here is another timeline that could even prove this. Back in 1917, there was something called the Balfour Declaration that Israel had. Okay? So, about 30 years after that, Israel, in the year 1947, became a nation again. After Hitler came out of power, after the Holocaust, in 1947, Israel was united as a nation. Which, in prophecy, that is when the end time starts ticking, you know, the time starts ticking down. Okay, 20 years later, 1967, there was something really interesting called the Six Day War, which was Israel's war with, I think it was a couple other countries. It lasted for six days, okay? Now, Israel celebrates something called Jubilee, you know, the year of Jubilee, which is basically a celebration that happens every 50 years. And if you add 50 years to 1967, you will get the year 2017. 2017. All of this is connected. Okay, all of it. God, he uses time. He uses the timeline as prophecy. If he wanted us to be blind when the Antichrist comes, when the tribulation begins, he would not have given us his word. He would not have given us revelation. This needs to be noticed, okay? So, so far we have a star that is appearing every 2,000 years. Abraham, for two years, he founds the nation, makes the foundation of the nation of Israel, okay? 2,000 years later, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he is born. For two years, this star is there. And now, 2,000 years later, 2,000 years later, Starting on September 23rd, 2015, this star showed up again. And 
all of this constellation stuff with Virgo, you know, Virgin, Jupiter going in a circle, coming out of it, just like a pregnancy. He, the United Nations on December 23rd, 2016, exactly nine months before September 23rd, 2017. This is a countdown. Something big is going to happen. And it is happening sooner than we think. So the final question is what will happen? What will happen? That is the question that people are asking. But there's not, this is something else that is going to really shock you. Let's talk about the other constellations next. Okay, right next to Virgo and Leo. If we read in Revelation 12, verse 3, here it is. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. Here's verse 4. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. <laughs> okay, let's start with the dragon. The great red dragon right next to Virgo there is a dragon called Draco he is the red dragon of the sky okay Draco is the dragon okay now this next part is going to blow your mind a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns right next to Draco there is the constellation of Boutes, I think is how you say it. Booties, I don't know. B-O-O-T-E-S. And it has 10 stars in this constellation. Exactly 10. Above the head of Draco. These are the 10 horns that it is speaking of. And the 7 heads. <laughs> the 7 heads right next to Boutes there's what they call the Corona Borealis which has seven stars in it and it shapes a crown this is Draco this is all in the sky and this is all gonna be happening on September 23rd 2017 okay this is all gonna be happening okay so here we have the great red dragon Draco with ten horns Boutes and seven heads or seven crowns the crown and he is in such a position to where it looks like he is waiting waiting for Virgo to have Jupiter pass through okay <laughs> and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born Okay, this is a sign, a sign from God. This is all showing up. Something big is going to happen. Okay, now, here's the thing, is we have to remember, most people when they read this, they thought it was talking about Israel, and they're right. The more research I've done on this, I have come to the conclusion that not only is this great poetry, but this is like a double meaning. It is literally showing us a sign and talking about Israel at the same time talking about the birth of Jesus the birth of our Savior it is talking about it you know and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron and to her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, which is twelve twelve sixty, a thousand two hundred and sixty days, three and a half years. The woman and and if we 
put Israel in place, it changes completely. And Israel fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her a thousand two hundred and sixty days, three and a half years. Obviously, what we are reading is this Revelation 12 sign is signaling something big with Israel. Okay, the United Nations is even doing it. December 23rd, 2016, nine months before the December 23rd, 2016, nine months before September 23rd, 2017. This, nine months before, the birth will take place on September 23rd, 2017. Something is going to happen to Israel. Whether it means Israel is going to be invaded, whether it means there will be war, World War Three, people are calling it the rapture. But what is going to happen here is something huge. This is something that hasn't happened, and we're talking 2,000 years. Okay? This is special. This is special. Okay? And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared of God. They should feed her there. 1,260 days. At this moment, Israel... Which, if you're thinking this is just the nation, you're wrong. Israel are the followers of God. Okay, Israel is everybody. Every Christian, when you are saved by Yeshua, you are a part of Israel. Israel, when it is speaking about it here, Israel is not a flesh thing. It is a spirit thing. This is spiritually speaking, okay? You are spiritually a part of Israel. This is why I don't believe in that pre-tribulation, which is what everybody seems to be believing. And mainly, one of the reasons people believe it is because they don't want to have to experience the tribulation. Because it's a, it's a scary time. No one wants to see the Antichrist. No one wants to see the false prophet. No one wants to see death. No one wants to see the mark of the beast. People want to hope. They hope. That they can avoid it by being raptured up with God. But it doesn't work that way. Okay? God said the tribulation, the great tribulation, will be the greatest test of faith. And yet, we want to skip out on it. Because we don't want to have to die for our beliefs. What is even happening? Israel is going to be under attack, and they are going to have to flee. Christianity will be under attack. We will have to flee into the wilderness, into the desert, wherever we can. And this will happen for three and a half years. Okay? After that, it talks about Satan, the devil, having a war in heaven, being cast out. It's talking about back in Jesus' birth, you know, the testimony, the lamb, he being slain. Let's go to Revelation 12, verse 12. Therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. That he has but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished, for a time and times and half a time, from the face of the serpent. Which is another three and a half years. Now we have seven years total. This is a tribulation happening. Okay? Y you see, this is why I don't agree with the pre-tribulation rapture. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. Obviously, the Bible speaks of persecution in the end times. Christians will be persecuted. But here's the thing. If there's a pre-trib rapture, that means Christians will not be 
on earth when this persecution happens. So my question to you is, if there's no Christians on earth, then who is being persecuted? Israel? You're not actually going to try and tell me that Israel is still on earth while the other Christians are in heaven. You're not even going to like say that, right? Seriously? Like, okay, we've already discussed that something big is going to happen. Big things have been happening, okay? If we read Revelation chapter 9, it appears that is describing CERN opening the portals in which Azazel is released, or the fallen angels, okay? Revelation 11 talks about the two prophets in Jerusalem. Let's read Revelation chapter 11, okay? Let's start with verse 3. And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a two, a thousand two hundred and threescore days, twelve sixty, three and a half years. Same time period. The tribulation has already begun, which means the two witnesses will not show up before the tribulation. They will show up during the tribulation. Because with all the deceiving happening with the Antichrist, these prophets will show up. You see, these will be the prophets that the book of Malachi, if I am correct on this, the book of Malachi actually describes Elijah as the prophet returning. Okay, Malachi, chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great dreadful day of the Lord. This, the great dreadful day of the Lord, that is before the coming of the Lord. Okay? Yeshua will return after the tribulation. And that, Elijah will show up before the coming of the Lord. Okay? Before his return, Elijah will, will reappear. Okay, in Revelation 11, it speaks of two witnesses. One of them, I know, has to be Elijah. Okay, now the other prophet, I have done my own speculation. I believe this other prophet could be Enoch. Okay, Enoch is from the pre flood world, the antediluvian world. You know, he witnessed the fallen angels in the Nephilim. Not only that, there are only two prophets spoken of in the Bible that were raptured. Okay? They were raptured. And that is Enoch and Elijah. So it would make sense if these two are them. It, it would make total sense. Okay, so it appears that even though it is Revelation chapter 11, it is all talking about the same time, the same tribulation. Okay? So let's read... Verse 6, these have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. Verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And their bodies shall lie in the street of Jerusalem. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not permit their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwelt upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. We're at verse 11 now. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear 
fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were frightened and gave glory to the God of heaven. That is why the prophets came. So that way people could even know Jesus in the end times. You see, even when they die, God will resurrect these prophets. Okay? Revelation 12, verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness. Two wings. Two wings. Sounds an awful lot like two prophets. Two witnesses. Why? That she might fly into the wilderness. Okay? That she might find God. Into her place where she is nourished for three and a half years. You see, the first three and a half years will be bad. There will be war. There will be a new world order. In the next three and a half years will be just as bad except the prophets the two prophets will arrive they will come down from heaven for three and a half years they will prophesy they will give glory to God okay but at that same time they will die and be resurrected and go back up to heaven Okay? This is Revelation 12 it's speaking of. Revelation 12, verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was angry with the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God, and gave the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is war on Christianity. This is war on Israel. The war on the followers of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ. Okay? You may not have ever realized this, but Revelation 12 is a timeline. It really is. It mentions... September 23rd, 2017, the beginning. Well, I'm not going to speculate, which I kind of am, but this very well could be the beginning of the tribulation. We have to have an open mind about this, okay? This could be the beginning. And, okay, I'm not going to tell you that there's not going to be a rapture, but to anybody who thinks that there is a pre-trib rapture, I want you to know you need to be careful okay you need to be really careful because if something big happens like what do they say will happen a false rapture for instance with aliens right world war three war with israel the rapture if there is a false rapture put on by aliens by the fallen angels by the secret societies by all them if you come out there and you accept them and you join them because you think that this is a pre-trib rapture what if you're wrong seriously you need to think about this what if you're wrong okay this is all I'm trying to say is I believe not in a mid-trib rapture, but a post-trib rapture. Okay, I believe that the Lord will return and we will be on his side fighting him. We are not going to just skip out on this uh, greatest test of faith. Why else would there be a tribulation? If you turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 
verse 14. Okay, we're going to read 14 through 17. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So basically we can't prevent them who are with the Antichrist, or on Satan's side. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. This is talking about after the tribulation. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. This, this is what the Bible says, okay? This is all what it is saying. And in case you're still a pre-tribber, I have another Bible verse for you. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. For then shall it be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, days shall be sor shortened. This is signs of the second coming, okay? And if we actually look ahead, it says here in verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. That's your Nephilim stuff. Okay. And there is also a Bible verse in here which says, No one knows the time. But of that day, verse 36 actually, But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. I believe that. I don't know the hour Jesus will return. He will give us signs of when the tribulation begins. He will give us a timeline of seven years. But we will not know when he will return. Okay? Okay, and if we actually keep reading Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, this is going to destroy your whole pre-trib ideology. Verse 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. That right there just described the coming of the Lord and him gathering his people from each of the four corners of the earth into his army where we will fight. The Bible's saying that. You know, obviously, some probably won't believe what I'm saying. They, if you want to believe in a pre-trib, I can't change your mind. But all I'm saying is, are you really willing, willing to deny what these verses say for a pre-tribulation pre rapture? You know, is that what a true Christian would do? So, all I have to say now is, Something is going to happen on September 23rd, 2017. If nothing does happen, well, something's gonna happen probably, you know. Maybe there'll be another UN resolution, I don't know. All I'm saying is something is going to happen. And we, as Christians, we 